Hello everyone, this is Nikita and uh, in this video I wanted to discuss about class inheritance in PEGA. So uh, the previous video I just uh, explained about how do we create a new application in PEGA uh, but after the, that step the next step is how do we inherit rules in PEGA between different classes. So this is very important and we should understand uh, all, all the necessary things about inheritance in PEKA. So let's start about the topics I would cover in this video. Uh, this is about framework and implementation, right? How does a framework and implementation, um, you know, exchange rules, right? Imp how implementation is inheriting the rules of framework? What are pattern and directed inheritance? And what is the precedence of inheritance? Like what, what rule takes over uh, when, when the rule resolution engine of PEGA has to uh, take care, right? So that, that uh, I would cover in this video. So let's start. Uh, this is uh, my application, which I have built in the last video. So this I had built on top of XYZ Bank, which is for me a framework application, okay? So now uh, let's start about the work group. When I created this, this application claim, what was the work group which got created? So this is the work, work group, okay? Claim work which got created when I created a new application. So I would first check the definition of this class. So yeah, so this class is a concrete class which I had discussed in my earlier video what are concrete and abstract classes. So please go and check out that video if uh, you still don't know the difference between concrete and abstract because that is important. Uh, next is, this is a class group, right? Uh, this also I had discussed, but uh, let me tell you very briefly. Basically, uh, the, it is a class group means whatever case type I would create uh, in this application, in this work group, all will be by default saved in the same table which is mapped to this particular class group so when i do a test connection i see some class right so uh, sorry some table so this table in this table by default all the case type when i create would be saved my data would be saved in that table so that is about is a class group right so now coming to the most important part for this video, it is about class inheritance, okay? So in class inheritance, you see there is a checkbox, find by name first, pattern, and uh, there's a checkbox here, and then there is a, you know, autocomplete where you can give the parent class for directed inheritance. So let me first uh, explain you what is the pattern inheritance. So when I take this class, okay so this class right now let's understand what is pattern inheritance so in pega uh, pattern inheritance comes into picture when we separate different uh, names by different class names by the dash so coming to this class so let me write all the different classes in here so all these are classes some may be concrete and some may be abstract but these are different classes so basically we need to understand the parent child relationship here so work class this particular class separated by dashes are the child of this class which again is the child of this is child of this class so this is how the pattern inheritance works in PEGA okay so do you understood his this is basically let me write it down this is child of this okay and again coming to this child of this this is how it works and this would again be a child of some classes but that would be some PEGA provided classes. What we can do is we can check that. Let me show you. Right. So let me go to the definition. 
So you see this is a top level class, right? So this is an abstract class, but it has also an inheritance. So what is the inheritance here? It inherits from work dash cover dash. So basically this is child of work dash cover dash. So this is the basic, uh, basic parent child relationship. But coming to pattern inheritance, so pattern inheritance always follow, always follow dash relationship. So this symbol is important when we are talking about pattern inheritance, right? So here, when I see, let me go to my work group, this work group. So you can see there are three names and these are separated by a dash. So basically work, this whole class, sorry, this whole class is a child of this still claimed class because these are separated by dash. So basically going to this chain when they are separated by dash, this is called a pattern inheritance. So pattern inheritance stops when this is reached. Okay. So let's, again, let's talk about directed inheritance now. Coming to this, when I go here in this place, you, I can see find by name first pattern. So in the pattern, when, when you check on pattern inheritance, uh, this, this class you need, need not to give. You need not give any class for pattern inheritance because that's understood. I have to follow the dash, right? So I know that uh, after work, I have this till this claim class and so on. So I don't need to give any specific class. But when it comes to directed inheritance, so directed inheritance is, is a different kind of inheritance and where it does not follow any dash, uh, you know, symbol. Coming to the direct inheritance, you can see that there is a class given, right? So this is the class directed inheritance basically it is an alternate parent you can say you can say this is an alternate parent so for now this is the directed inheritance for which class for claim class so this this is my claim class and directed inheritance because of the directed inheritance it inherits from this class so this is the relationship between two different classes when they are tied with a directed inheritance pattern inheritance we understood we have to always follow a dash symbol and we will understand Right, but in directed inheritance, we have to specifically, we have to specifically name our parent. Okay, if I don't want this, I can have some other class also, but I have to specify some class. So I can give you an example when I, you know, remove this and I try to save it. You see that I get an error. Please define a directed inheritance parent class because this is mandatory in PEGA. You need to have a directed inheritance. Pattern inheritance is a optional thing. That's why you can see a checkbox. Find by name first pattern. Okay. I remove it. Even if I try to save it now, you can see it's getting saved. So what will happen uh, when I remove this checkbox? First, my alternate parent would be called. Okay, so after after the, you know checking the rules from this particular class, the next class which I would go and find out my rules would be this class. Okay, so basically we would first go to my alternate parent and then I will go to my actual parent. That's kind of thing, right? So let's let's keep it as a default for now. Okay, so this is very important that we understand the different uh, class inheritance again i can give you one example that since it is a work group right so it is mandatory to have some work class as the directed inheritance class so if i give some different class suppose i try to give some assign class let me see if it's getting saved 
सम असाइन एनी क्लास लेट मी गिव सम असाइन एक्सटर्नल ओके लेट मी ट्राई टू सेव इट इट्स गिविंग सम एरर राइट क्लास ग्रुप शुड इनहेरिट फ्रॉम वर्क और एनी ऑफ इट सब क्लासेस सो इट इज मैंडेटरी टू हैव सम वर्क क्लास देर सो वॉट आर द डिफरेंट वर्क क्लासेस वी कैन हैव राइट वर्क डैश कवर सो एनीथिंग एनीथिंग फ्रॉम वर्क क्लासेस और एनी सब क्लास राइट सो दिस वॉज ऑल्सो अ सब क्लास विच आई हैड रिमूव इट आई कैन गिव द दिस सब क्लास इट वुड टेक सो एनी सब क्लास और एनी वर्क क्लास इट वुड रिक्वायर नाउ इट्स गेटिंग सेव so i hope you understand the difference between pattern and directed inheritance now okay so pattern inheritance it follows a dash okay so you have to just go to your class then you know that what would be your next uh, parent right so you remove this okay so this is my parent now right again i want to know what is my next parent so you remove this now you know this is my parent so this is pattern inheritance coming to directed inheritance what i have to do i have to go to my specific class first this is my specific class and i have to check in the class inheritance what class i have defined here whatever class i would define that would become my directed inheritance parent so you might be wondering why this is xyz bank work so if you remember when i created this claim application i created this on top of xyz bank application right and this xyz bank application also has a work group what is the work group so the work group was xyz work that is why see this this was the work xyz bank sorry okay so this was the work group right so that's why it was uh, kept as a directed inheritance for the framework application so i hope this is clear now uh, that's how the inheritance is working in pega now uh, in the coming videos i would explain you how this by rule resolution it's working like right? creating rules and then we would see that uh, in the tracer we would see that after this rule which rule is getting executed is it following the correct inheritance order or not right so remember till then remember what is pattern what is uh, directed inheritance uh, like we can change the directed inheritance from the class definition and uh, pattern inheritance you know can be secondary but directed inheritance is a mandatory field which you have to give okay so this is all for this uh, particular video thank you so much for watching it i would look forward to see you again in my next video till then see ya bye bye